So in this problem here, we have steam entering a turbine at steady state. We have the mass flow rate, we have the specific enthalpy, and we have the velocity. Now at the exit, we have the specific enthalpy once again. Um, we have the velocity at the exit, and then we have the elevation difference between the inlet and the exit is 3 meters. Uh, we have the heat transfer from the turbine to the surroundings, and then we have gravity as well. So we're going to have potential energy here, and we're going to have kinetic energy here. And we have to determine the power developed by the turbine in kilowatts. All right, so here we have our schematic. We have the turbine inlet, turbine exit, and we have everything, uh, the specific enthalpies on either side, the vo uh, velocity on either side, the mass flow rate, change in elevation, and we have the heat transfer. Now, when I draw out a schematic like this, I just see that I have absolutely everything I need for a single inlet, single exit control volume uh, energy balance equation for this. So let me show you what I mean. So if you recall, the energy balance equation over a single inlet, single exit control volume just states that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power, W, plus the mass flow rate times, it's going to be times all of this, so big bracket, times the change in enthalpy, so what comes in minus what comes out, H1 minus H2, plus the um, kinetic energy, which would be V1 minus V2 divided by 2. Just remember MV squared, 1 over 2 MV squared. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to make another line here, plus MGZ, so we have the mass flow rate times uh Gravity times the change in elevation, Z1 minus Z2. So over here, we have pretty much every single property that would fill out this expression here, except for the power. So let's re re uh, rearrange this equation and solve for the power. Oh, and before we do, I think I forgot to add these squares here onto the velocity. Remember, it's 1 over 2 mv squared for kinetic energy. So now if we re rearrange and solve for the power, we're going to have that w dot equals the heat transfer q dot plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy, h1 minus h2, plus the kinetic change in kinetic energy, which would be v1 squared minus v2 squared, divided by 2, plus the potential energy of MGZ, Z1 minus Z2. It's a change here, and then close the brackets around all these different kinds of energies. So now that we have our equation here rearranged for the power, we can finally solve for the power. So we have W dot equals the heat transfer. So the heat transfer was 1.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, if you multiply kilojoules per kilogram by the mass flow rate of kilograms per minute, um, you should have your power, or sorry, your heat transfer in, on a per unit time basis. But actually, now that I think about it, we probably would want to replace this unit here with kilograms per second. So to do that, we're just going to divide by 60 to get kilograms per second. So we'll have uh, one-sixth kilograms per second equals the mass flow rate. So therefore, we can multiply our heat transfer of 1.1 kilojoules per kilogram by 1 sixth, and you should have a unit of now kilojoules per second, which would give you kilowatts. And that's the unit we're looking for here for the power, right? So, so now we'll add the mass flow rate of 1 sixth times all of this here. So we have um, H1 was 3100, and H2 was 2300. Both of those are kilojoules per kilogram, so when you multiply it by, once again, kilograms per second, kilograms cancel out, and you're left with kilojoules per second, which is a kilowatt. Now, the tricky part is the velocity, so we're going to add V1 squared, which was 30 squared, minus V2 squared, which was 45 squared, and divide all of that by 2. And now, notice that here we have meters per second, but before that, we actually had kilojoules. We had a prefix of kilo for the uh, for the enthalpy. Instead of being a joule, it was a kilojoule. So we actually need to have a uh, conversion factor here by dividing by 1,000 
to make sure that we get the proper unit here of kilowatts to can we need to carry over kilowatts among our change in enthalpy our uh, kinetic or sorry yeah kinetic energy and our potential energy so we can't add a kilojoule a joule and or sorry i should say a uh, this would be a kilowatt this would be a watt and this would be a kilowatt so to keep everything in kilowatts you have to divide by 1000 that's crucial you will get the incorrect answer if you do not and now we have to add the potential energy so we have 9.81 times the change in elevation is three and once again, your potential energy was just meters, so it would give you uh, watts instead of kilowatts. So once again, just divide this by 1 over 1,000, and now we can close our bracket. So if the enthalpy was given, the specific enthalpy, if this was given in joules per kilogram, we would also have to multiply that by 1 over 1,000, or just divide by 1,000. But obviously, because it's already in the kilo, kilo unit, you don't have to do that. So now if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the power W dot equals 133.43, of course, in kilowatts. Now, because the power is positive, that means that the turbine is generating power. Unlike something like a compressor or a pump, which would have a negative power because those are power consumption devices.